One of the biggest challenges to the aquaculture industry is preventing and mitigating disease. A single disease can knock out an entire season's worth of fish in just a matter of days, placing a tremendous strain on fish farmers and deeply affecting the seafood market. ARS researchers are being asked more and more to help with fighting fish diseases. We've made our way back to the Cool and Cold Water Research Center in Leetown, where molecular biologist Dr. Greg Weens and his colleagues are fighting fish disease three ways. First, they're developing vaccines. Second, they're breeding fish strains that are resistant to select diseases. And third, they're providing guidance to the industry of best practices for keeping their fish healthy. We had toured a bunch of fish farms and talked to producers and talked to them about their problems. And what we found is that every location has kind of a, a unique set of problems and oftentimes require kind of different approaches. Probably the easiest approach is to develop a vaccine against the pathogen, but there are a number of pathogens that the vaccine approach hasn't worked. And so we've tried a different approach for those, and that's trying to improve the genetic resistance of the fish against the pathogen. Selective fish breeding programs for disease resistance has become an increasingly important role in aquaculture production. As Dr. Weens mentioned, some diseases just don't respond well to vaccines. We've puzzled over that. Why do some vaccines work and why do some vaccines fail? If you look at the history of immunology, this has been the phenomena that has been observed since the beginning. We're still struggling to make a vaccine, for example, against HIV or tuberculosis and malaria. Those have been historically very challenging diseases. And the same equivalent is true in the fish world. There are some diseases that the first time people have tried to make a vaccine just by killing the bacteria and introducing it to the fish, it works great. And they've been vaccines that have worked for 50 years now in aquaculture. Now you try the exact same thing with other pathogens and it doesn't work. It has to do with the details of the immune system and what the immune system responds to. And when it responds, is it responding in the right way? Is the response protective? So the vaccines that have worked really well against some of the bacterial pathogens, there's an antibody response. And those antibodies at very low concentrations kill the bacteria. And it's very effective. Now for these other pathogens, like the bacterial cold water disease, the antibodies don't work very well for reasons we still don't understand. Understand. And I think that you need more of a cell-mediated immune response. And that's what I think we've changed with our breeding. Bacterial cold water disease is one of the most frequent causes of elevated mortality in juvenile salmonids, such as salmon, trout, and steelhead. It's really a kind of a terrible disease. It's kind of the equivalent of the leprosy in the fish world. So it's, it's a disease that the producers don't like and they really want a better solutions. Historically, antibiotics have been used and their interest in reducing antibiotic use against this problem. And so we decided to take a breeding approach. The problem with breeding new lines of fish is it's a slow process involving multiple generations and many years. That's why researchers were first trying to develop a vaccine for a disease. A vaccine could be developed, tested, and ready within a couple years, while breeding a new strain could take five years or more. But that said, one of the advantages of the breeding approach is once you have a resistant fish, all the farmer has to do is to raise the eggs and the fish. He or she doesn't have to do anything else. And so the farmers really love having a resistant animal. For years, Dr. Weens and his colleagues have been working on strains that are resistant to cold water disease. And after five generations of breeding, they have improved fish survival by 60 percentage points. That had a meaningful difference on the farm and survival. So my research is really trying to understand what we've changed in these fish, you know, how we've changed the immune system. Are there any trade-offs that we've made by making the fish more resistant? What happens when you vaccinate the fish that are more resistant? These are the things that I'm still continuing to work on. And really, we're trying to get to the bottom of the actual genes that we've selected variants for that confer greater resistance in our fish. The third prong to fighting fish diseases is working closely with the farmers and offering best practices to keeping their fish healthy. We really rely on the input of the farmers to tell us what their top problems are. And we try to help get to the bottom of what the issue is. 
you know, they have a good sense of a happy fish versus a not happy fish. They look at their fish every day and they know when there's an issue. They don't always know exactly what the cause of the problem is though. And the cause and effect can be difficult to sort out. What's the cause and what's then the best course of action? That's where I think we can, again, add value and help with that decision process.